if you remember from calculus two, uh, when we learned the uh, arc length, the arc length is a value. I mean, if you have a specific endpoint, the curve starts at a certain value of t and goes all the way to another value of t, then you have a certain value. But uh, what happens if you don't want to specify the endpoints? You want to come up with a generic expression for the arc length. Then essentially what you're saying is let's create an arc length function for uh, for uh, for a general uh, uh, solution. And then once we have that, we can replace the uh, variable, or in this case the parameter t, with the endpoints. So let's look at uh, the arc length function. So uh, we're going to define, here's the s that I would say. That's why I didn't want to use s in the previous example. Uh, Let's s of t be the uh, the arc length function. Of a, of a space curve, C. <coughs> such that. Uh, one, we have two conditions here. Um, C is traversed exactly once as T, uh, as T goes from, uh, let's say, from A to B. Actually, as T increases, uh, as t increases okay as t increases in other words for instance you can have a closed curve say a circle right or, or ellipse or any other closed curve and you know if you recall uh, <laughs> the same circle well we can express the same circle by going once or twice. For instance, uh, if we go twice around, then we're still going to have the same curve. Okay. So, uh, if you recall uh, from calculus two, a circle can be expressed in different ways. We can express as a circle as cosine t uh, plus sine t, cosine t i plus sine t j. Or we can express the same circle as sine t plus cosine t, plus sine t i plus cosine t j. Uh, the circle we can we can depend on as well as cosine two t i plus cosine two t j. What will be the difference between uh, the previous two and the last one? Well, the last one we complete one uh, round by going from zero to pi. We don't have to go from zero to two pi and so on. So uh, we, were we need to, in order to come up with a function, we need to go traverse it only once. The second condition is that uh, we have continuity. So there, we're going to require that the vector that describes the curve is continuous. I'm sorry, the vector, the derivative vector function is continuous. Okay. Otherwise, we'll have really some some weird results. So, uh, this is the uh, preliminary to this uh, to the definition of the vector, uh, the arc length function. And what is the expression? Well, the expression will be the following. Uh, we're going to say that the function will be s of t, like so. It will be the integral from 0 to t of, remember, we said that the arc length is the integral of the magnitude of the, uh, the uh, derivative vector function. And here I need a variable of integration. Notice that I'm integrating from 0 to t. t is a variable, the parameter. Does it remind you of FTC1? 
because this is exactly what we are doing. We are using FTC1. So uh, even though we used U already one time, I go back and use U and uh, the U. So obviously U is the, is the variable of integration, and we can write it like so if we want to um, to spell it out. One, another form for R prime is, or the magnitude of R prime instead of F, because we have parametric expression and, and that's what Kyle showed us. F prime, F is really X equal F of T. G is Y equal G of T and uh, H is Z equal H of T and if you take the derivative, then f prime becomes the x dt, g prime becomes the y dt, and h prime becomes the z dt. Okay? And we've seen it before. So instead of this expression, we have the, uh, the square root of the x dt squared plus the y dt squared. So up to here, it's calculus 2. And then we have the z dt squared, which is the difference between uh, a 3D a space curve and a plane curve. <clears throat> and actually, it will be du, du, and du, because the variable t becomes the upper boundary, and the variable of integration is du. Okay? So the x du, the y du, the z du. It's all squared. <coughs> That's kind of bad influence, influence here. Oh, okay. Now, what happened by this is if you think about it, what happened if you take the derivative? This is FTC one. Okay. Notice that this expression is FTC one. So here's a comment. By FTC1, see calculus 1, uh, <clears throat> if uh, we differentiate both sides, we obtain Uh, what happens if we differentiate both sides? We have ds dt equals um, either this one, but this one becomes dx, the square root of dx dt squared, the y dt squared, the z dt squared, right? Or in short, we can say it becomes the, uh, um, the integrand evaluated at t. So it becomes the magnitude of the derivative vector r evaluated at t like so. Okay. Or we can write it as the absolute value of dx dt squared dy dt squared dz dt squared. 